What's going on guys? Welcome back. My name is Brandon. We have a super fun episode planned today. A lot of you folks have asked me real specific details on how I laid out my fabrication table and specifically how do you build the template. Well today we're going to get real in depth on how to build the template so you guys can build your table any size you want. It won't matter. Stick around. All right guys, this is my fabrication table and I built it using a template. Now if you wanna see all the other details that we don't cover in this, I'll put a link to that video above. It's called Building the Ultimate Fabrication Table. Now this table measures 30 inches by 30 inches, so 30 by 30, and it's 3 8 inch thick. I would not go any thinner than 3 8 Half inch might be a little bit better. And that equates out to 76.2 centimeters, by 9.5. Now for you guys that aren't really sure what a fabrication table is or why you would want one, well basically what it does is it allows you to lay out things on your table and make things at a 90 degree angle to themselves so they can be welded and it also gives you a place where you can clamp down things. You can see these right here, these are some Harbor Freight uh, clamps that I purchased and then modified by welding on what's called a shoulder bolt. Holes in fabrication tables are all pretty typical. They're always 5 8 thick. At least in this area, there are 5 8 diameter hole. And the layout on that for this table is I've done holes every four inches. Now, a lot of the fabrication tables you'll see, they have the holes spaced out two inches on center. Well, I wanted four because I don't really have a reason to make them any smaller than that. And I felt that if I made the holes like two inches spaced on center, it's gonna take a lot of strength out of this plate and I did not wanna do that. So I'm just gonna give you a couple quick demonstrations of why you would want a fabrication table. And then I'm gonna show you in very specific detail how to build the template. Because if you don't build your template right, your table's not gonna be right. Everything is squared to itself on this table. All of these holes are 90 degrees to one another. You can technically pop in one of these shoulder bolts. All this is is a shoulder bolt that I purchased and cut the thread off the end. And this is what they look like before you cut them. That's the part you're going to cut off. You're just going to cut that thread off. I use my portable bandsaw to do it, but you could just put this in a vise. I'd be careful about, you know, clamping against this surface here because you don't want to nick that all up because that's a nice machine surface that fits perfectly in these fabrication table holes, but just chop that off. Then I just bring it to the grinder and just put a tiny chamfer on the edge of this shoulder and it just helps to line up to get it down in the hole. But they are 5 8 by one inch long, meaning that this shaft size is 5 8 and then the bolt overall is one inch. And I just cut off the end because this piece, if I didn't cut it off, the threaded piece, it would actually hit this table below. Here's just a real quick example of why you might want a fabrication table. You can take and put these bolts that I just showed you right in the table, push them down in. They fit snug so there's no slop. That's because this area right here is a machined surface. Then we can put another stop here and we'll put another stop, let's say, right here. And we take our test piece of material, bump that right against the stops, just like that. We can take our other piece and bump that against the stops. And that makes a perfect 90 degree corner. You can take your clamps that you fabricated and drop those down in the hole. And now your work is all secured. It's that easy. That's how fast this setup is. I didn't need to have any tools. I didn't need to take out any squares because I know that this is perfect because I laid my template out perfect so I could get these perfect 90 degrees. Well, that's what we're gonna work on today is getting this template perfect because it's like building a house. If you start off with a crooked foundation and you don't fix it at some point, you're gonna end up with a crooked roof. You gotta start off right when you start your template or else the product at the end isn't gonna be great. The template that I'm showing you how to build today, that'll work for a table this size, whether it's 30 inches or 20 inches or 20 feet, it won't matter. This template you can use 
for any size table in any layout pattern. Like I said, I went for four inches on center just because that's what works for me. I can, you know, I can rotate this clamp anywhere within that arc to catch whatever it is I want to fabricate. And I also wanted to save burning up my annular cutter because if you're going two inches on center versus four inches on center, you're cutting twice as many holes. Over the year I've had this table, guys, I have not found it necessary to wish I had made this two inches on center. But that's just me. Uh, do what you want to do, but I would keep it standard. I would keep the holes five eighths of an inch because five eighths is a standard size hole. So whether you buy your clamps or whether you build them, they're gonna fit your table because all the clamps come with a 5 8 apparatus. So you could buy something store-bought and use it with your modified table. So you don't necessarily have to build your own clamps, but I chose to just because that was fun to do. Again, I'll have links to the shoulder bolts and all the stuff that you see me using in this video to help you guys out. But let's work on building this pattern. Now I want you guys to pretend that none of these holes are on this table. Let's just pretend that you've got your piece of plate and you want to start from scratch. And this is how I would do it. I would find out the width of my table. We already said it was 30 inches. So I would probably just cut a piece of steel to like three feet long. Just cut it longer than what you need it. That'll be the first thing we're gonna do is cut a piece of steel 36 inches. One of the common questions that I get is, what do you use for steel to build your template? Well, originally, we used a piece that was three and a half inches wide by eighth inch thick. That's what this is here. This is actually that template. Well, it doesn't need to be that big, but what it does need to be is big enough to clear your annular cutter. Now, let me show you. So that I knew to get this perfect, I made sure that the steel bumped the edge of the magnet on my drill, on my mag drill, and then I bored the hole through it. You see that? You see how that lines right up perfectly? In order to do that, the minimum width that you need across this is two inches. That's for this mag drill, and this is the Evolution mag drill. So here's how to determine what the width of your plate is that you're gonna need for whatever manufacturer your mag drill is. So. I've got the 5 8 annular cutter bit in. This is the actual 5 8 hole that we're gonna use. Take your tape measure, bump it up against the magnet, and then look what the reading is just to the outside of your hole saw. So you can see that if I went with a piece of plate two inches thick, that would leave me just a little bit of material beyond the cutter, and that's what you want. So for me, I'm gonna go with the minimum size required, which would be two inches wide, and I'm gonna use eighth inch thick plate. And I'm gonna cut that to 36 inches long. And for this, guys, I'm just using my Evolution Tools cutoff saw. And again, I'll have links down below for all this stuff that I'm using. Now that we have our template piece cut, the next question comes is, is, how do we know where we start our holes, space them out, let's just say four inches for our example, and then how do we know where they end? How do we know where that's gonna fall or how that lays out? One of the things that I did in the video was I actually laid out my table by scribing some lines. What if your plate isn't 90 degrees to, to itself? Then you could be laying out lines this way but then when you go to put lines on this way, if your plate isn't completely 90 degrees at this corner, you could be laying out the lines skewed. One of the ways of checking it, this is what's called a drywall square. And if I line up a set of my holes, like right here, and line it up along that edge, you can go right down and see that over here, it's lined up the same as it is over here. But for me, fortunately, my plate is square, and you can see, you know, just the edge of that hole, and then you come over here in the edge of that hole. But, you know, you can't take for granted that your plate is gonna be perfectly square. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to work around that, because it really doesn't need to be square after I show you what we're gonna do. So to start, pretending that there's no holes in this table whatsoever, just grab your template, and then clamp it down your plate then just take your tape measure hook it on one side 
Then just start making a mark every four inches along this. This is where you want to be real precise, guys. This is where you really want to take your time, and this is where it matters. And I know that the tape measure is upside down. I apologize for that, but it is what it is. That's how I laid it on here. So you're going to make another mark. Scratch it at 8. You'll do another mark at 12, and so on down the line making sure you get a perfect mark right on your four inch centers. So now I've got a bunch of marks scratched into my plate. I got one there, 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 all the way down through and I feel that those are very accurate. Take your time with this step guys. This is where it matters. Now take whatever you have for a square and line it up to one of your marks and then scribe it in to your metal all the way across. Can you see that line I just scribed in? Let's do it again one more time. There's another one right there. I take the point of my scribe, put it right on my line, bump my square to it, hold down with real firm pressure on your square and scribe it. There you go. See how crisp that is? That is exactly four inches on center between the two. Now you want to carefully go down through it doing the same thing all the way down. Put your scribe right on the line that you just made before. Bump your square into it. Press down with nice firm pressure and scribe it into the metal. For the purposes of this guys, I'm going to take my scribe mark, I'm going to put a black magic marker over it so that you can see a little bit better and I'll put a scribe through the black magic marker. You won't have to do this uh, if you're doing your own fabrication table, but I'm just doing it so it shows better up for you guys at home. So now what I would do is I would focus on these marks from here inwards, not necessarily from there outwards or from this side outwards. I would focus more on these lines here and these are the lines that can help you determine where you want your table, how to set it up so that your table is balanced equally. Now if you look right here that looks pretty even right there so I could go you know then I could line it up so that's showing there's about an inch there and there's just about an inch there so I could literally drill a hole here, 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 and here, and have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight holes across the table. And I'd know that this is, you know, I'd be starting about an inch in because you can see my lines, they're pretty balanced between the left and right side of the table. Then we could do the same thing going in the other direction of the table, you know. One easy way to find out is line up the back measurement, you know, line it up right here, make this scribe line flush with the back edge of the table, then measure the difference from this scribe line to the end of the table, and it's showing just about two inches. So that means that there'd be an inch on each side. So if you held that and in an inch and in an inch, that'd be balanced on your table. So that's how I go about getting it centered on my table but I chose to have a little more material on the outside of my plate all the way around. I had to measure from one of my scribe lines to the edge of the table and for this table it's roughly three inches there and it's roughly three inches there. I just kind of slid this around and found the spot where it worked on my table. Now once you know where it needs to be on the table this way, okay, left or right, what you want to do is take your template clamp it down. Again, kind of near the edge of your table like I've done here. Now what you're going to do is you're going to transfer your template marks that you just made on your template back to your table. Okay, So scratch them into your table on every single one of them going across. What this is going to do guys, this is going to give you a reference line that you can verify your work. There you go. You can see those pretty good. You can see I got a scribe line right there 
and right there. I'm going to get rid of this right here because we're not using it and I don't want it to confuse me. So the only lines showing are the actual lines that we're going to use. Try to keep everything the same as you're doing this, guys. So I'm going to put an R on the template so that I know that this is the right side of the template and the words will always be up. I'm going to put an R on my table so I know that I'm always working off the same part of my table. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to work off this side, this edge of the table. I'm not going to use that edge over there because I don't know if that edge is straight. Well, we do know it's straight, but let's just say we don't know, or let's say it isn't, and we can't use it. We can use this edge. So pick a straight edge, use that one, mark your template, mark your table. Now I'm going to put my square on that line. You could use a framing square, but better yet, this is actually better, a drywall square. Clamp it down, hold real good pressure so it doesn't move, and scribe your table. Do it all the way through. So now I've got all my lines scribed into the table, but I'm a visual learner, guys, so for me it makes it a lot easier using that template to slide it around so I know where things have to go. But, you know, like I say, if you're good with math and you like numbers, you could easily just measure this, lay it out using a tape measure, figuring out what your spacing is and whatnot, and do it that way. That's absolutely fine. But, again, you want to pick one surface that you're always going to use as your reference and don't like turn the table. So I wouldn't want to work off that backside now because what if that backside is not parallel to this side? And this is the side I've laid it off from. Let's just say it trails off that way. Then now we're going to be building it crooked this way but straight this way. You, you want to pick one edge, mark it on your, on your table like I have right here and just continually build off that one edge. Don't work over here and then work over here and then work from that side. Pick one side, work from it and stay on that side and build everything away from you or however, but just keep it consistent, okay? But again, we're pretending that there aren't any holes in this now. So what you should have is some lines going across your table that are fairly close to uh, even on the outside. So for here, it's like three inches in and three inches in and they're pretty well spaced out. There's nothing that says that the holes uh, could be an inch on this side and two inches on this side, but for me, I just kind of like the symmetry of the balance. It doesn't, doesn't mean anything. The spacing and the layout is the most important part that we're gonna do next. Now, the next thing you're gonna figure out is where does it go in relation to the table this way? So you're gonna do the same thing. But this time you're not going to put lines all the way across the table because you don't know if this edge is square or not. Again, we're going to slide it back and forth, figure out where it is even on the table. For this table, this is where it is right here. It's about three inches in this way, three inches in this way. You will take your scribe and scribe a line on the table that intersects the line you drew this way, okay? Which would be right where the center of that hole was actually plunged. So you'd put a scratch mark right here on this table. All you've got is a plus crosshatch right here. Remember this. This is important. We're going to come back to it. You've got a plus hash mark right here. You've got a line intersecting this way that intersects this line right here on the right side of your table. We're going to come back to that. This is important. So this is where it really starts getting fun, guys. We scratched off this right here. We said we weren't using that line. I've got just a little piece of thin quarter inch Luan. is a scrap piece that I can set my steel template on. And the reason I've set it on top of a piece of wood is so when I drill through my template that I don't hit and scar my table. Grab some clamps, clamp it down. And you can see that my wood is not sticking out beyond the edge of my template, interfering with my template. So when you look at it, you can see none of the wood is protruding past the face of this. That's important. Just have it be under just a little bit. So this is where it's going to start making a lot of sense. You're going to take your mag drill, boom, and bump it 
right into the edge of your template. Now, all you got to do is line it up this way onto that line. Then you're going to slide down, you're going to drill that hole, slide down, do the same thing, drill that hole. That's why it's important that this template is clamped down tight because you don't want this to slide around now or you're going to have a poor layout. Now do you see that? That little piece sticking out of the tip of that annular cutter is actually a point. It comes right down to a nice sharp point. Well that's what we're going to line up to our scribe mark right there and that's how we're going to get this absolutely perfect. So we lower our cutter down, get it right over our scribe mark. It's super important that you get this perfect. And that looks pretty good right there. So again, now our magnet is bumped right up tight against our template and our mag drill side to side is lined right up perfectly centered to our scribe line. Now you want to turn on your magnet. See, now that can't go anywhere. Check it one last time because this is only going to come out as good as your measurements come out. For you older guys, if you need to get a set of reader magnification readers to make sure that this is absolutely perfect, go do it. It's worth it. Now this mag drill has an automatic oiler, but I don't have any uh, regular cutting fluid in it right now. I'm just going to spray it on. So do a little bit of cutting fluid, turn it on, and bore your hole. Now turn off your magnet and get any of these chips out of your way. You don't want them interfering with your next cut. And you especially don't want to have any chips between the magnet and your template. So now take your template, make sure that's all clean on that edge and make sure there's no metal chips against the magnet. Now slide it again right up against your template. Line up the center point to your cutter onto your scribe line. Once you get it where you want it, turn on your magnet and bore the hole. Now if you guys don't have a mag drill or you're not ready to go out and buy one yet, you guys can always go out and rent one as well. You can get those at your local rental stores. It's worth it. Just rent it for the day. That way it'll be perfect. But Again, the width of your template is based on how far back uh, the magnet is, you know, where you're bumping it up to. We went with two inch because that works for this. So if your magnet is in a different location, you may need a wider piece of plate or narrower, depending on how the base is set up on your mag drill. Once you pick it up, you'll know. And again, I'll have links to this mag drill and to the annular cutter set that I have that I'm using for this down in the video description. Just click down below and it'll have all the information and actually you'll even get a discount if you're looking to buy one. Now I'm just gonna continue doing the same thing down this row guys, sliding it along my plate steel. You can't mess it up. You just bump it into the edge of your plate and that's where it goes. You're only focusing on this direction here, side to side. So that way you know that your template is not gonna be wavy. These holes along this edge they're in a nice, complete, straight line. They have to be. Now we've got our template drilled all the way across. What you're going to want to do is get your mag drill out of the way, take your template off, wipe your template down, clean up your work area, get rid of all these chips that you just made. Our work area is all cleaned up. Our template is almost done. We still got to do some welding, but we're going to do a couple more things. Now bring your mag drill over to here. 
Now remember, this table doesn't have any holes in it yet, but you do have an intersecting mark right here. Remember I told you about that one? Right where those two lines intersect that we talked about earlier, I want you to take a center punch and punch it right there. Take your mag drill, line it up just like you did for the template, and bore a hole right through your plate steel, all the way. So you've now made your first hole in the table. Take your template, put your template on there, grab one of your shoulder bolts, and then stick that right down through your template and the table. So now you've got the shoulder bolt in that side. Now we've got to line up this side. You're going to take your drywall square again, and you're going to line the edge of it up. Line this edge of the drywall square up to the scribed line that we made earlier. Okay. This is pretty, it's going to be pretty easy to do too, and I'll show you a couple other ways you can verify it. So that looks pretty close there, but you're like, well, it's kind of up in the air a little bit. So then you go over here and you can line up your four inch mark. Because remember we did every four inches. So four, eight, line your eight inch scribe mark. You can verify that those all line up. So once you know that you're all lined up, the edge of this is in line with your scribe mark, all you're going to do is you're going to slide your template up and down the table. So clamp this together with your hand. It's obviously hinged over there. And you are going to move this. So see what I'm doing? I'm moving this forward and backwards. I'm going to line up this edge over here with the scribe mark that we made in the table earlier. So you can see right there. I'm right on the edge. You see that scribe line? Hard to see. It's right there, right straight, dead center of my fingernail. Okay. I'm going to pull it back so it's right on the line. Perfect. So now this, that, is 90 degrees to that. So now that we have this right here, we're going to be real careful. You're going to take a pair of clamps, vice grips, whatever. Carefully clamp it to your table. Do the same thing over here, just so things don't move around. Clamp this side. Now, take your square again, bump it into it, run it along this, check all your lines. Check, make sure you're right on, make sure you're perfect. Slide it down again to this, to this line here. Check it down there. This will verify that this is in perfect alignment with that. If you guys do it this way, you'll end up with a perfectly square table. And these reference lines that we scribed into the tabletop, those are going to be more of a visual reference so that you know that your template isn't moving off. They just kind of tell you that everything is running perfect. It just confirms that it's working right. Now you're just going to bring the mag drill over again, butting it right to the edge of your template. And all you're going to do is lower down your bit so that it goes through your template. And then now into the table. And now you'll just drill it out right through your table and keep moving down the line. Now you've got one full row in your fabrication table of holes that you've bored through your table. Now you're going to grab some of your two inch flat bar and you're going to cut a couple pieces about six inches long. Now just throw a quick bevel taper right on one of the edges of each piece. And you could do that using an ankle grinder or a bench grinder. I'm just using a bench grinder here. There you go. You can see I put a little bit of a, about a 45 degree bevel on each of those pieces. Now just take your template and just move it over. So now, remember, you've got one set of holes drilled all along this. None of those holes are drilled for this demonstration. Throw in one of your shoulder bolts into the table, and that should all line up nice. So now your template is pinned to your first set of holes. And what you're going to want to do is take your bevel side up and line that up to your outside set of holes right here. So just like that, you don't have to measure it, just center this plate, center it on that hole right there, just like that. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna weld that 
right across there. You're going to want to do a real good job because if this tab happens to break off while you're working, your table is going to get screwed up. So do a good job. If you feel like you need to weld the back side as well, go ahead and do that. Once you get this welded, flip it over and weld the back side and then grind your weld flush. Whatever process you have, weld this on centered to that hole. Just make sure you do a real good job doing it. I never showed you my hood in last week's episode, the one where I'm going to give one of these away. If you guys haven't seen it, I'm giving away one of these hoods and they are awesome. This is called a 180 degree panoramic and it's called True Color. And the optic clarity on this is one, 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 one. Four ones, it's the highest optic clarity that they make in a welding helmet. And I'm going to be giving a brand new one away to one lucky viewer. This giveaway is not advertised anywhere else on any other uh, platform. Only here on YouTube for my viewers and I only talk about it in the middle of the video so that somebody just doesn't click the video just so they can get in on a giveaway. This is for my regular viewers that watch my content all the time. If you want to know how to get in uh, to, to be eligible to win this helmet, I'll link that video up above and you guys can go check it out and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, make sure you like the video there it is this is the helmet I'm giving away pretty uh, sick paint job huh all right anyways let's get back to it I wanted to go over this I want to give back to you guys but I just wanted to get you involved so again guys you don't have to measure anything just center this on the center of that hole there and that's got real good penetration the reason we put that little bevel in there, guys, is so we can get nice deep penetration all the way to the back side of this plate because we're going to end up grinding this flush. We're going to grind the weld off after. Alright guys, we are almost done with our template. Now, you can see how that's nice and flush. Now what you want to do is you see your scribe mark that you have right here. And I didn't mention it earlier, but get yourself a good scribe. I'll put a link to this down in the description. This is super handy. You'll use it for more than just doing this template. I use this all the time. If you're a regular viewer, you'll know that I'm pretty much using one of these in every single video. Just get you a nice uh, clean mark. So grab your square again. Take your point. You'll actually feel it like going into the scribe line that you made earlier. And then just slide your square over so that that bumps it. Now you know it's absolutely perfect. Then what we're going to do is we're going to carry this line all the way through onto the plate that we just made. Now make sure you're holding your square real solid against your workpiece. You don't want it to slide. There you go. Get yourself a nice crisp scribe line. See how clear that scribe line is? Now we just got to do the same thing on the other side. Take your time with this guys. Like I said, you get this template just perfect, your table will be perfect. You mess up your template and your table's gonna be messed up. Now this next part, we're gonna have to put a hole in this plate four inches away. Now the easiest way that I know to do this is I'm just using a cheap caliper uh, that you can get from Harbor Freight and I'm just gonna set that for four inches. So if I put it on the five, it doesn't really matter it, which number you use. You just, whatever your spacing is. If you're doing two inch spacing, then just set it for two inches. If you're doing four, then just make it four inches. So you can see I'm right on the line there, right on the line there. That's exactly four inches spread apart and just snug it up so it doesn't move. That's the important part. Make sure it doesn't move. And I'm going to come over here again, making sure that this measurement stays the same that you've got this locked down so you don't move it. Bump it onto the back side of the hole like that and then on this side scratch it in a little bit. Now that's the back side of the hole. That's the back edge of where that hole needs to be. So now you'll just line your annual cutter up to that mark. It's hard to see but I'm right above it right now and that is the back edge of where our cutter is. Right where that line goes right there. So here's our center line and there's the back edge of your cutter. We just got to make sure we line that up real nice. Now I know it's probably hard to see guys but you're going to just do the same thing that we did before in our template. You're going to line up the center point 
of your annular cutter. Now you've just got to focus on the back side, making sure that the back of the cutter is right on our mark. Look at that. That's like perfect, guys. Can you see that? That's it, right there and right there. So take your time, guys. Get this right. These steps matter. And your part's already hanging over the table, so just turn on your magnet, hit it with some spray, and just drill it nice and careful. Now we just got to do this side. Now when I mentioned earlier, guys, about wearing a reader for the older guys, that wasn't a slam for us old guys. I just turned 51 this year, but I find that having a pair of readers, and I think these are one and a half time magnification, um, although I might look like a goober, I'd rather look like a goober <laughs> and be able to, you know, have accurate measurements than, uh, than look cool and uh, have not so good accurate measurements. Even for you guys that have good eyes, like I have, it just, it helps. You don't want to wear them around the shop, but doing like precision stuff like this right up close, you can definitely get more accurate uh, measurements and more accurate layout with a set of readers. So pick yourself up a pair, even if you have good eyes, there's no shame in that. All right, it's our last hole of our template, guys. Again, nice, nice layout marks, go nice and carefully. There, now we are done with our template. This is where I would tell you to clean up all your chips, get your work area clean, and let's get ready for the next step. So I wanna tell you a little bit about my mag drill. Initially, when I bought this, I was wondering how much use I would actually get out of it, but I actually bought it with the intention of building this apparatus right here, because just using a mag drill on its own, like placing it on a steel beam, and then punching a hole through the steel beam and then moving it around, I don't necessarily have a lot of use for something like that. But for a drill press, I definitely need a lot of use. Now I have another cheapo one right over here that I've used for years, and this will take a half inch drill bit, but it doesn't have a lot of power. It's only like a one third horsepower. But this on the other hand can run all kinds of tools. You can run big, large hole saws. It comes with a big, nice half inch Jacob Chuck that goes up inside this. You can run big annular cutters and it doesn't bog down. So for that reason, I decided that this unit's gonna run you about 500 bucks. And I decided for me that that was worth it because a drill press, a nice drill press is gonna cost you at least 500, okay? But with this, now I get the best of both worlds because I now have a mag drill that I can take on a job site, I can take and work around the shop, it's portable, I can move it anywhere, but I also have it set up 90% of the time right here as it sits, and it works like a drill press. So for me, that was a huge added bonus. I like the idea of having one tool that does multiple different tasks, and this just kind of fits that bill for me. So that's just something for you guys to consider. If you want to check out how I built this, I literally bought this old drill stand, and it had a blown up head on it. It was all junked out, so I ended up cutting the post, welding a big plate on here. We did some layout to it. And I paid like $75 for this whole thing. That includes the base, the drill, the, everything except for this. And it just, I am so glad I would not change a thing. I love how this works. And again, like I mentioned earlier, there's links down below in the video description if you look down in there. And a lot of those links, if you click on them, I have exclusive promotions with these companies that pass on savings to you guys. And I know uh, that Evolution Tools is one of them. Uh, if you buy through those links, you'll save yourself a considerable amount of money at checkout. So just something to consider. The channel gets a little bump in full disclosure, but uh, I, I don't push things to you guys or tell you about things unless I truly believe in them. And, and I truly do, obviously, because you guys see me use this in probably almost every video I do. So. There are a few tools that are my favorites, and one is my portable bandsaw stand that we built. This one, my fabrication table, that's used like in every video. So. 
there are certain basic staples and I just consider this one of the basic staples that I gotta have, that I need, so. Works great for me. Let's get going. We got our work area all cleaned up. We're all picked up. Everything is nice and tidy. Now this is where we begin drilling. So this is where the fun part begins. So take your shoulder bolts out and now you're gonna move Pretend, remember, we're pretending none of these holes here. The only holes that are in the table is this row that we drilled just a little while ago. So now you're going to take this, you're going to move it forward, you're going to put your shoulder bolts in the table, nice tight fit, and now you're going to take your mag drill, just like we did before, bump it up against the edge of this plate, line it up so now the annular cutter just like falls into that hole. You don't have to line up any scribe marks or punch marks and literally bore through your table. Do that one, that one, that one. Then move your template ahead another four inches, work your way down the table. It's that easy. And then to verify your work, you see that scribe mark right there? You want to make sure that as you go up the table that it's right in line with the scribe lines that you made. And that tells you that you're running straight, that these and those are 90 degrees to themselves. If you follow this procedure, you will have a fabrication layout table that is absolutely perfect. One other thing I didn't mention is do not weld anything onto the back side of your plate until you get all your holes drilled. So what you want to do is just set it up on some 2x4 blocking. That'll get it up off whatever work surface you're working on and that'll allow you to do the things that uh, we've been doing, to put clamps on the sides and stuff like that. And the reason for that is that you don't want to end up putting square tube where you end up drilling. Once you get all your holes drilled, then you can flip it over and then you can weld a frame underneath it to keep it lifted up off the table and I'll show you mine right now. I'm just using one inch square tube and you can see that everything is placed in a way that it's not interfering with any of my holes couple notes of caution when you do this, be careful on how much heat you put into your welds. That's why I only have little short uh, tacks all the way around. This doesn't provide any rigidity to the top. Really all it's doing is it's just holding it off the table so I can clamp things on the edge. That's it. So just be careful because you don't want to warp your plate. Even half inch plate, if you put too much heat in it, it will warp. And because my table underneath is a powder coated uh, table. I try to keep it kind of nice. I actually put little felts on the corners of my, um, of my stuff here so when I slide it around the table it doesn't scratch it and dig into it. It does get worn and it wears and whatnot but I try to keep it as nice as I can. So those are just a couple other concerns when you're building it. So after a while you're going to be using your table and it's going to get worn and it's going to get some spatter on it. So here are some tips for that. So occasionally you're going to get little BBs that stick to your table. I just use a regular, I think it's called a three-in-one or a six-in-one painting tool. That's all this is. This isn't a specialty welding tool. This is made for painting. And I, oh, see, there we go. There's a little BB there. I just scrape the table. Go, go over the entire table. Just like how you see a chef clean their grill, that's what you're going to do to this. That'll get all the loose BBs off. If you have a bad spot of weld that you can't get off the table or a piece of spatter that just will not come off with that, you can grind it off, but you got to be careful. You don't want to use the grinder the way you'd normally use it. You don't want to use it like that. You don't want to dig into the table. Whenever you can, try to carefully keep the grinder level and do it in a, and do it in a pattern like this, keeping it completely flat. So moving it side to side. You don't want to go digging in or wearing in uh, like troughs or bowls into your table. So just be real careful with it and you can go side to side, go back and forth. You don't want to try to grind on it too much, but that's the way to do it. Keep it nice and flat. And then you don't want your table rusting. And this is how I take care of mine when I'm done. Once I'm all finished welding, I just take some WD-40 spray the entire table down, then just get a rag and wipe it down. That's it. That's how I prevent it from rusting, keep it looking good, and it kind of like puts a coating on it so the next time you're ready to weld.
And that's all there is to it, guys. This is such a rewarding project. Again, it's a lot of work. It's, you know, not hard work. It's just a lot of layout because you got to be real careful and you got to take your time. But if you do, you're going to end up with a product that's going to last you for many years and you're going to be super proud to use it every time you do. I hope that this cleared up a lot of things that maybe that first video that I might have glossed over and some of the things that were real important I made sure to stress in this video and let you guys know. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you're wondering what I'm working on before it makes it up to YouTube, you guys can catch me on Facebook and on Instagram. Like I said earlier, if you're wondering about any of the tools that you see me using and you want to maybe get a little bit of a bonus or some cash off at checkout, Click those links down below. It's going to save you a pile of cash. New videos every Friday. So until next week, guys, I will see you then. Take care. Stay safe. Please like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you next week, guys. Take care. Bye.